Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and um, in this video, I'm going to be reviewing to the um, season premiere of Justified Season 5, um, Episode 1, called A Murder of Crows. And um, I was really looking forward to this premiere. If you guys don't know, in case you didn't watch my video that I posted, I binge-watched the first four seasons over my um, winter vacation. And, um, yeah, I, you know, I was really, just really looking forward to this premiere. It, it looked really promising to me, and um, it definitely did not disappoint. It looks like it's going to be another fantastic season, um, and I'm really looking forward to a lot of it. There were also some really funny parts, I think, in this episode, uh, especially in the very beginning. So, um, we open up season five in court where Raylan's on the stand being questioned by Dewey's lawyer for the terrible things he's done to him over the years. And Dewey's lawyer is, a uh, U.S. Attorney, uh, David Vasquez. Uh, he winds up settling with Dewey and he must be suing, he must have been suing the government for $300,000. And I thought Dewey was actually just, Dewey was a dumbass this whole episode. Like, he has so many stupid things in this episode. Like, he thought he said $300 and he said $300,000. So he's like, no, you're not giving me just $300. I thought that was actually really funny. That was definitely a, a good beginning funny scene. I thought that was funny in my opinion. I enjoyed that. You know, that was definitely, that was definitely, yeah, really good. I thought that was really funny. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of what ends up happening. And, uh, because of this, um, Art kind, Art sends, um, Art sends Raylan over to, he, he sends him over to, um, Florida, where he can help with the other crows, basically. And he, he tells Raylan, essentially, you know, don't worry about this. I'm going to take care of this. You enjoy... Because basically we find out that Winona has now had her child. The child that Winona was carrying, you know, for the past, like, two seasons. Um, that child's now been born. And, um, he kind of says, don't worry. I will, you know, do it. You don't have to worry about it. You just go home. Send some time to your child. And he says, oh, no, no, no. I can't do that. Oh, I mean, I'll be able to see my child at some point. But not right now. So that's what Raylan um, basically decides to do. So he goes to uh, the rest of Dewey's family, and um, there's this really funny scene with Dewey as well, where he's playing naked Marco Polo with these two girls, and, um, you know, Raylan comes up to him, and again, they have just a really funny scene because, you know, Dewey's just, Dewey's just really dumb in this episode, in my opinion. And then Raylan eventually shoots the pool, which is probably the funniest scene in the episode. I thought that was actually really, really funny. I definitely enjoyed that. So now going back to the rest of the Dewey's family, they're not well off. He is down in, you know, they're not very, they're not as well off uh, as he is down in Florida. Dilly Crow is working with Elvis Machado. Um, and uh, Raylan is sent to investigate what Elvis and Dilly are up to by art, and he's warned that He's warned by Dewey that them Florida crows are bad news, which, yeah, they are sort of, I think, bad news. Um, when you think of Dilly, think of Dickie from Season 2 and Season 3. Think of Dickie, and, uh, that can basically give you but more, like, hardcore and just more, uh, stupid. Um, think of Dickie. This is exactly what Dilly is like. So, um, basically then you see that Raylan is paired up with Greg Sutter, played by, uh, David Kochner, um, which is a pretty cool, actually, if you ask me. I, I hope is, I hope he's on the show more. You know, he's definitely a really good, um, actor, definitely. I thought he is a nice character on the show. Um... Then you have Daryl Crow, uh, Crow Jr., who appears to be the head of the family, and since he's just paralleled, he's not too happy that Dilly killed someone and is causing trouble uh, for the Crow family, basically. And um, he, again, he thinks that, you know, Dilly is the stupidest person ever, which he is pretty stupid. Uh, many of the Crows are stupid. And then you have the mother, who basically is not getting along well with her husband at all. She's just trying to... You know, she's just there because, you know, she loves her husband and everything, but they're always fighting. 
And um, I did like seeing the conflict that they had and that Dilly kind of sees a conflict and you do have sympathy for them. Even though they're the villains, you have sympathy for them. They always end up doing that very well, in my opinion. So then um, Wendy winds up uh, picking up Elvis with the intention of driving him to Raylan and Greg. But she crashes her car on purpose so he can get away. But that's just a cover as she also tells Raylan exactly where he's heading. And Raylan finds a motorboat trying to get to Cuba. He tries to convince Elvis to come away peacefully. But Elvis opts by su for suicide by cop. So by the end of the premiere, Raylan and Daryl seem to have an uneasy alliance, but of course, this won't last long. So, you know, they're going to have some sort of alliance, and maybe Daryl might not actually be the bad one here. I think Dilly is essentially, you know, the really bad one. He just seems really um, mean, and every not really mean, but just like really the perfect villain for this show, definitely. I definitely saw that with uh, Dilly. Um, and then the only other scene that we do want to talk about, um, with Raylan is Sammy Tone's death. It's shocking since he's in, he's been in barely, uh, barely been in charge of the Detroit mob at the ending of last season. But after, um, but given the phone call Art gets at the end of the episode about Sammy's whereabouts, uh, and when Nick Augustine is killed, it seems like Raylan could be found out later this season for the deal he made with Sammy. And uh, this is actually a very cool plot line, I think. I'm definitely interested to see where they're going to go with this, because, you know, is Ark going to protect Raylan, or is he going to go against him and say, hey, you know what, you screwed up, you made a mistake, you should not have done what you did. I, I could definitely see Ark, you know, maybe, you know, saying that to Raylan, I could see that. Um, we'll have to see what else happens. And then... Um, so then after this... Basically, we get a, a Skype phone call from Nona and the new and the child. He gets a phone call from them, and um, he wants to support them and everything. But it looks like Raylan is actually gonna fall in love with somebody else, and we'll have to see what happens there. And um, I definitely enjoyed seeing that. By far, though, the best part of this episode was Boyd, um, which is no surprise because it's always the best part of the episode. I always think that his scenes are the best. Really, Walter Goggins really gave a great performance from this episode, especially the ending of the episode, which, in my opinion, was the best part of the episode. So let's just get started with this. So Ava, as we know, went to jail last season because of that dead body thing. And even she even has a lawyer who goes by the nickname of The Wild One. And since Boyd isn't able to get her out right away... Uh, he basically tells her, you know what, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get you out of here. And Boyd is basically just at the end of his rope here. He really doesn't have anybody at the moment. He doesn't really have anyone, you know, to help him out or anything. So Boyd's not in a, the best si in situation right now. He's in a very bad situation, I think. And definitely that's going to cause a lot of conflict with things. So since Boyd isn't able to get her out right away, he's busy dealing with issues up in Detroit with his partner, Wynn Duffy, who is now, you know, a major character on the show, which I actually did like seeing because Wynn Duffy is a very interesting character. Um, so Boyd doesn't have easy go in this episode as he gets part of his earshot and gets Sammy Tone's blood splattered on him. He ends up just getting shot repeatedly and, um... And when and basically when when Picker murders Sammy in front of both of them, the new business arrangement he's got going with Win and the Detroit mob is not off to a very promising start. There's this group called the Canadians, but they're not, you know, very loyal. They don't want anything really to do with them. And um, we'll have to see, you know, definitely what happens with them with the Detroit mob. And with all this causing trouble, um, we definitely, this was definitely the biggest scene in the episode. All this causing trouble for Boyd, he decides to stick himself in the mud even further when he murders Paxton at his funeral home after he refuses to help. Because he gets this call from Paxton, basically. And Paxton he says something along the lines of, we're not helping Ava. You know, she's staying in prison for however long she is. You, there is nothing you can do about it. And Boyd just gets furious at this. He's pissed off at this point um so he goes to his um he goes to Paxton's funeral home 
after he refused to help Ava, and he, he offers um, Mara, Paxton's ma mail-order bride money, to be quiet, but she doesn't tell Boyd de de um, definitively on um, whether or not she wants it, and Boyd just kills, just starts, you know, repeatedly killing Paxton, it looks like, and instead, the episode ends on Mara checking on Paxton's dead body and telling him she'll take care of him. And that is how the episode ended. So now Boyd is kind of back to his season one self where he's this just very violent person, which we really have not seen since like early season one. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what they're going to do with this. And overall, I really did enjoy this premiere. I thought it was a really strong premiere, in my opinion. I thought there was a lot of things to love about it. You did have a lot of conflict with the Crow family. Then you had the whole thing with Boyd and Win Duffy and all of them on the... Detroit Trail, which I think is definitely very interesting. Some people I know are not happy about it. I had no problem with it. In fact, that was my favorite part of the episode because it was just really, really interesting to me. And I did love a lot of the things that Boyd said. Anytime, you know, the boy the Detroit Mountain said, what happened in your ear? He would say things like, seal and fan or things like, it's, you know, he's like, oh, you know, sometimes something happened in my ear. It's not about what happened to my ear. I thought he had some really great quotes about his ear. Definitely, that was really funny. And, um, let me know what you guys saw this episode. Um, so here's my question for you. Who's going to be the big villain this season of the Crow Family? Will it be Dilly or Daryl? That's what I'm wondering. Um, also, are we going to see Dewey Crow again? I'm, I'm assuming we will. Also, what about Art? Uh, now that he's received that phone call about, you know, Sammy Tonin, is he going to protect Raylan or is he going to go against Raylan and call him out about this? Because I think, I mean, Art really is like a father to Raylan, so I definitely, you know, can see that happening. So, um, yeah. Also, will Braylon eventually, you know, care for his, and by the way, he had a daughter. Um, will he care for his daughter and, you know, come to provide for his daughter? I'm sure eventually he will, but not yet. Also, uh, what's gonna happen with Boyd now? I, I, he's basically just on the verge of insanity right now because he has nothing he can do to save Ava, and that's the one thing that he really, really wants to do, but he can't do it. Um, and is Ava eventually going to get out of prison? I'm sure she will. Um, and that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Overall, as I said, I love this premiere. I thought it was a great premiere as usual. I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye.